É, a primeira pergunta, Ted, é como você avalia a participação dos colaboradores no processo de preservação da memória corporativa? Participação, como uh, se dá a participação do colaborador da Coca-Cola? That's a very good question. What we typically do is make our archives available online. What, what I didn't show you is we have an internal intranet site. And from that site, we solicit stories. We solicit employees to send us leads on artifacts that are out there, collections that are out there. This is hard to do. <laughs> and and we, we get most of them via the intranet site uh, that we, we branded and, and we've sent out to our 100,000 employees around the world. We also work directly with our markets. So like Coca-Cola Brazil, when I was here in 2006, soliciting those oral histories, gathering together the, the items of, the, of our heritage, we worked with the markets. We also worked with the teams like World Cup, FIFA, uh, IOC, to, to get those marketing materials as it produced. Então, tem uma pergunta aqui que, uh, em relação à interação com os diversos públicos, por meio das redes sociais, como você avalia os prós e contras, se é que existem contras, claro. That's the, 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 there are cons. We, we have, the Coca-Cola company has detractors who will try to hijack our social sites. But what we have found is that our community has more supporters than detractors. So on our Facebook page, if somebody posts something negative, usually 10 times as many people come to counteract that negativity with a positive comment about the brand or about their memory, hope, and wishes for Coca-Cola. So the detractors get drowned out in the conversation by our supporters. As to why we do it, and, and it's a major investment, we spend, our heritage team spends about 25% of their time working on social media. That's a lot of time. But in spreading these good news stories about the Coca-Cola company, we're, we're changing the way that people search and find Coca-Cola. So if you type in Coca-Cola history, the first three sites that you're gonna find are all Coca-Cola sites. You're gonna find Coca-Cola Journey, Coca-Cola Conversations, and Coca-Cola YouTube. So it takes a while before you get down to negative sites about Coca-Cola because we've so filled up the positive. É, uma pergunta aqui da Márcia. Como você vê, Ted, a articulação da história da empresa com a sociedade? O vídeo, por exemplo, sobre o Rio de Janeiro mostra aspectos da cidade que vai além da, que vai além da empresa e acaba por mostrar um registro histórico da própria cidade. Né? Marcia, that's a great question. And I'm actually a historian. I learned archives later, but I'm a historian. So when I see those videos, I feel that exact same, uh, that same feeling that, that you're seeing something in a way that, that's new and unique. What we did at Coca-Cola is we have donated the film you just saw, plus 25,000 other ads and films to the United States Library of Congress. So if you were to go to, to US Library of Congress, gov in the near future you'll be able to see that video it we felt that those kind of films were bigger than just coca-cola and they belong to everyone so we made that donation so the anything that we had the rights to be able to give we donated to the library of congress and they're working to now make them available digitally so uh we'll, we'll share the history with everybody because it's not just ours 
Uma pergunta da Gisele da Bege. Uh, quais outras ações, Ted, além dos embaixadores, o Archives, realiza junto ao público interno? E qual a importância dessas ações para os colaboradores ou junto aos colaboradores? The other things that we do that I didn't address in here because I focus so much on digital is we have a very strong exhibit program and we have a very strong uh, speaker program. The, I'll do exhibits first. I currently have four exhibits out around the world in different markets uh, that, that are being activated, that both for employees and then for general markets. Uh, and, and next year we'll do the same. We'll have anywhere, each year is probably 12 exhibits uh, that, that continue to tell our story. The speaker series, we're part of the global onboarding program for our marketers. So if you are a best and brightest marketer within the Coca-Cola company, you get sent to Atlanta uh, for a one week onboarding program and touring the archives and hearing a 45 minute history of the Coca-Cola company is the very first thing that you do. So the archives are ingrained in marketing from the very beginning. Uh, a Lúcia Santa Cruz, da, S, da SPM do Rio de Janeiro, faz uma pergunta. As iniciativas de memória da Coca-Cola têm um apelo maior para envolver os consumidores ou para gerar cultura organizacional? Como é a participação dos empregados na formação do acervo? The, the participation of employees is just astounding. Most Coke employees, and tell me if I'm wrong, they, they live, breathe, sleep, and eat Coca-Cola. And when they see the exhibits, when they see that they're capturing and becoming a part of history, it really energizes the employee base. Uh, they, they're more excited than the general consumers in a lot of cases. Uh, It, there's a true passion for Coca-Cola heritage. One of, the, uh, one of the big giveaways that they do in the Coke system is you win a trip to Atlanta, particularly in Asia, you win a trip to Atlanta and including a visit to the world of Coke in Atlanta and the Coke Art Cards, that's always part of the highlight of the employee giveaway. Uma pergunta aqui, que é minha também. Uh, o acervo da Coca-Cola é grande. Qual o tamanho da equipe fixa? Coca-Cola, quantas pessoas? Quais são suas formações? We currently have three full-time and two contractors working on the program. Uh, I'm the director of the program. The second in command is a man named Jamal Booker. His title is Manager Archives Collections, and he, like me, has history degrees. He focused on African American studies, and in fact is the one that wrote the, the article counteracting the New York Times article. The third person is our processing archivist. Her name is Justine Fletcher. She's the only one with the true archives degree. She has a, a master's in archives administration, so she tells me what to do. Uh, and then we have two graduate students that we hire as full-time contractors. So it's a team of five to get everything done. It's a small team. I wish we had more, but... Aqui uma pergunta um pouco técnica. Como se dá a alimentação desse acervo artístico? O arquivo histórico está inserido no sistema? Enfim, o fluxo de documentos da companhia? Sim, e uma pergunta muito técnica. Nós somos parte do processo de recordes. É um grupo diferente, 
but when records go into records management, they're either tagged as permanent retention or non-permanent retention with a scheduled destruction. We do a quarterly review of all records management material, both digital and physical. Uh, there are catches in this. We don't, our records management program is not worldwide. Markets opt in to it, so there are some markets that we don't capture that type of material. But an ad being produced today in the United States will be tagged with permanent retention. So three years down the road, we receive a, the master version of the ad and all the talent associated with, with it, both print advertising, web advertising, and television advertising. So we're very ingrained in the process of creation. Uh, uma curiosidade aqui da Isabel Ferraz, se há outros polos de centros de memória em outros países, ou seja, no Brasil, por exemplo, se há um centro de memória focal que interage com a Atlanta? We only have one archives or one heritage center. Each office will generally come to us for information. That being said, the bigger markets typically have a smaller archive and a person who knows where all the material is. So Japan, we're working with them right now to scan 5,000 photos. They're going to keep the photos because they're very important to their market. We're going to help them catalog it because we know how to apply the, the search terms, the thesaurus, the, the metadata. Uh, and then we're each going to get a digital copy of the file. Our office in Germany is doing the same thing. We're scanning all of their magazines for them. We're going to return the magazines to them. And this is a magazine that goes back to 1950. And then we'll help them catalog it. So, But it did not make sense for us to set up an archive in every country, just one. Aqui uma pergunta relacionada ao Facebook. Uh, que recomendação você daria para uma empresa que gostaria de entrar nessa mídia social, nesse ramo? Within Facebook, to identify who you want to connect to and keep your focus very narrow on what your goal is. With each of our social media channels, we have a different voice. For Coca-Cola Journey, we write as scholars. I, I, when I write for Journey, I write like a historian. When I write for the blog, it's shorter and usually lighthearted. With Facebook, we try to give a peek behind what we do. So we'll take a picture of one of us cataloging and put it on Facebook and say, Justine is cataloging this today. With Twitter, it's very short and usually associated with a photo. So if you're very focused on what you want to say with Facebook, it's a great tool.